Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. We are two weeks into November, my friends, and the past seven days have been yet another seasonal feast of technological revelations, thanks to keynote events from AMD and NVIDIA, where they unveiled potentially the most powerful computing hardware ever known to humankind which is another way of saying boring server and data center AI stuff. YouTube also killed the like button, so take that haters. And there's a new cryptocurrency that mines with CPUs now, which is just, just great. Really, really great. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center, one of my favorite places to buy PC parts, whether it's online or at one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies, as well as the custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in stock at your nearest store while ensuring compatibility with your selections. Then you can pick up or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description and don't forget to sign up for the free in-store gift. We begin today with a recap of AMD's announcement slash presentation on Monday, where they showed off two major developments for the server market. For starters, they're making Epic Milan X CPUs with 3D vCache, the tech that they have been teasing for desktop processors since Computex in June, using a chiplet stacking technique that massively increases the amount of L3 cache from 256 megabytes max per socket with existing Milan chips to 768 megabytes for Milan X. AMD claims that having triple the L3 cache available benefits some workflows enormously, as much as 66% improvement over Milan non-X from earlier this year, and a 50% average uplift across specified operations. That language implies that they are targeting workloads that benefit from the additional cache, but since Socket SP3 motherboards will only require a BIOS update for compatibility with these new Milan X CPUs, which feature up to 64 cores and 128 threads on the flagship 7773X SKU, they will no doubt be in high demand. Much like with Ryzen on the desktop side, though, it sounds like there's a drop-in stack of CPUs coming with 3D vCache early in 2022, and then a bigger update for servers with a new socket and technology later in the year. And while that's the AM5 socket for Zen 4-based CPUs codenamed Raphael on the consumer side, for the server market it is codenamed Genoa, and has already been rumored to sport Zen 4 chiplets and up to 96 cores per socket. The follow-up to Genoa in 2022 has been revealed though, Bergamo, which I have taken great pains to pronounce properly, so if I have any Italian viewers let me know how I did in the comments. And that's coming in the first half of 2023, with up to 128 cores per socket. Bergamo will be built with 5 nanometer Zen 4C chiplets, with the C apparently indicating that they're built for cloud computing. Both Genoa and Bergamo will support DDR5 and PCI Express 5.02. And then there's AMD's Instinct MI200 series GPUs, or accelerators as they're called in the server world because they can handle a lot more than 3D graphics. The flagship MI250X is a multi-chip module beast with two graphics compute dies on the same package built with TSMC 6 nanometer lithography and based on AMD's new CDNA2 architecture. There are 110 compute units per die for 220 total, as well as 128 gigabytes of 3.2 gigabit per second HBM2E memory, which are all connected via AMD's 2.5D elevated fan-out bridge and nestled in a new form factor card called an OCP Accelerator Module. For a point of comparison, consider that the current top Radeon gaming GPU, the 6900 XT, has 5,120 stream processors, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and 512 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. The MI250X has nearly triple the stream processors, 14,080, and 128 gigabytes of HBM2E memory, offering six times the bandwidth at 3.2 terabytes per second. Oh, and AMD's promo video shows a server with eight of them installed, which, given the 560 watt TDP per unit, means you'll need close to 5,000 watts just for your accelerators with that setup. That's probably gonna be a noisy server closet. No word on price, but AMD did share their own performance numbers versus Nvidia's competing A100 card, claiming between 1.4 to over three times the performance. And the first cards are already being installed in the US Department of Energy's Frontier Exascale Supercomputer at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, which will be one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world, and also one of the most power efficient per flop. For the the rest of us who just want one to play Minecraft and stuff, it'll be available in Q1 2022. We have a couple Intel stories next, two rumors of upcoming CPUs in the Alder Lake lineup. Starting with a much needed budget option, a Core i3-12100F that could go for as little as 120 US dollars if early listings from Canadian retailer Direct Dial are accurate. Picked up by regular leaker MoMoMo underscore US on Twitter, the 12100F seems to be a 4P core 8-thread chip without graphics, as the F indicates, and was listed alongside three other SKUs. 
These prices are in Canadian dollars, which aren't really real though, so I'll give you the US dollar pricing. A 12700F for $362, a 12400 for $229, and a 12400F for $198, which would be a fine price indeed since early leaked benchmarks show it hanging with AMD's 5600X in performance, which is currently selling for more than $100 over that. Please, 2022 be the year that budget PC builds make a comeback. Mobile Alder Lake, aka Alder Lake P, is also hotly anticipated though, and will probably make a better case for those efficiency cores in Intel's hybrid 12th gen design. So a Geekbench entry for an i9-12900HK might pique your interest. Benchmark run details show that the chip has 20 threads via six performance cores and eight efficiency cores, and is housed in a Lenovo 82S9 laptop, running at 4.9 to just shy of five gigahertz. The test results unfortunately are a bit lower than another leak for this same chip from about two weeks ago, particularly on the multi-core side, but as with all early info, there's no telling what other variables might have affected the test run. At the very least, it seems that the 12900HK is confirmed to exist and will likely launch along with other Alder Lake P CPUs in January, 2022. Nvidia didn't want to let AMD and Intel hog all the attention this week, so they held GTC again their yearly GeForce technology conference that already happened this year back in April. Jensen is back in his kitchen with remarkably fewer spatulas, but as we discovered during the April GTC, his kitchen isn't actually real, and Jensen himself has ascended into the digital realm where he is pushing forward his plans to rule the omniverse, which is way better than the metaverse, with godlike powers and a cute toy avatar, complete with the cheek scar that I've always assumed he got during an epic sword fight with AMD's Lisa Su. All this is really a distraction though from the fact that Nvidia just doesn't really want to talk about gaming graphics cards at all. Please forgive us, immortal being of pure energy Jensen, if we found your hour and a half keynote a bit too cerebral, and while there's nothing inherently wrong with your advances in accelerated cloud computing, next-gen networking, cybersecurity, transforming industries with AI, or of course building virtual worlds with Omniverse, it all falls kind of flat when we still can't just buy one of your base-level gaming GPUs for more than a 500% markup. Toy Jensen's little leather jacket is, is super Super cute though. What's not super cute is YouTube's decision this week to do away with the dislike button on their platform, hiding it from view for everyone except the content creators themselves. If I may speak plainly for a moment, what the fuck YouTube? This is the stupidest fucking thing I've seen a company do since Blockbuster turned down Netflix. Way to take one of the most useful features of your platform, the public's ability to downvote poor quality content and hide it away on the pretense that it has been abused in a handful of situations. For the record, I'm against brigading and the douchebags who have such low self-esteem that they choose to spend their time mass downvoting a small content creator because they disagree with their personal views. That's peak douchebaggery right there. And it is a problem that you guys YouTube should come up with intelligent solutions for. This is not an intelligent solution. This is basically punishing us all on behalf of those douchebags while at the same time opening another window for abuse because there are a lot of awful scam ridden videos out there that people avoided because they could quickly glance at the like dislike ratio and learn from information that others have shared, which is kind of one of the nice things about how the internet works. Now there's just no way to tell that, particularly for tutorial videos where it can be most helpful and while I can only truly speak for myself here, the impression I've gotten from just about every other person I interact with online is that this is a horrible decision and you should really, really consider reversing it. We all have to deal with the tragedy of the commons to some extent in our day-to-day -day lives, but there's a reason collective punishment is forbidden by the Geneva Convention. Speaking of things that should be forbidden, cryptocurrency mining. Not cryptocurrency or digital currency in general, I'm actually all for that, but mining it by solving arbitrarily complex math problems with computer hardware is becoming more and more dumb. Case in point, there's a new coin everyone is talking about called Raptorium, which thanks to a big price spike since the start of November, can now be mined profitably with AMD Ryzen processors. Yes, CPUs, not GPUs. And this is apparently thanks to the hefty cache capacity that Ryzen 9 CPUs ship with, 64 megabytes for 3000 and 5000 series units like the 3900X and 3950X. Spanish website El Chapuzas Informatico already has pictures of mining setups using Ryzen 9 CPUs and X570 motherboards, and estimated earnings are about 
$3.50 per day for a 5900X or four to five bucks for a 5950X. While some PC owners might see this as an opportunity to earn a few bucks per day with their existing setup, be careful of the long-term impacts. If CPU mining becomes more profitable, people will buy more of them to mine with, and we could easily see shortages and price spikes similar to the GPU situation for the past one to two years. This could also impact sales of the AMD CPUs with 3D vCache expected early next year, since Raptorium mining is more profitable on CPUs with larger cache sizes. Hopefully this is just a flash in the pan scare like Chiacoin was for SSDs. Meanwhile, Rockstar's launch of the Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition has not gone off without a hitch with the trifecta of games, which are all originally single player offline designs, managing to break the Rockstar Games launcher, not just for themselves, but also for Red Dead Redemption Online and GTA 5 Online. Rockstar was forced to halt PC sales of the trilogy and shut down their game launcher just before noon on Thursday, an outage that was still not fixed 24 hours later. Which again, not only prevented people from playing these new definitive edition trilogy games, which were never made with online connectivity requirements in the first place, but also other popular titles like Red Dead Redemption that rely on the service. And maybe that's for the best, as plenty of gamers have expressed disappointment about some of the remaster's visual changes, which tend to look more bright and saturated versus the more gritty look of the originals, character models didn't all make the transition very gracefully either, and the camera angles can be very off-putting as well. All in all, it looks like Rockstar did the bare minimum to get this remaster produced, but what can you really expect given that parent company Take-Two Interactive only made $3.1 billion in gaming revenue last year, and they're clearly too busy issuing DMCA takedowns for popular mods that have already been up for 10 plus years that they obviously saw as a threat because they're better made than their definitive edition. Honestly, this was more of a cash grab than the old Vice City cone crazy exploit. Launch GTA 6, Rockstar. Well, that was a fun rant, but now it's time to cool off with some tech briefs, which are always airy and comfortable. More Twitter leaks hinted at tantalizing upcoming GPUs from AMD and Nvidia Monday, this time shared by Greymon55, who, to be fair, included a lot of question marks in the posts. Let's ignore all that and pretend they're true. AMD's RDNA 3-powered Radeon RX 7900 XT will feature the Navi 31 GPU with a multi-chip module design, perhaps similar to what they showed off with the Instinct Mi200 reveal that we already discussed today. There will be one or two TSMC 5 nanometer GCDs or graphics core dies and a TSMC 6 nanometer MCD or multi-cache die integrated, and clock speeds could be 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz, theoretically hitting 75 teraflops FP32, which is a 226% improvement versus a Radeon RX 6900 XT. NVIDIA's RTX 4090 would be based on the Ada Lovelace AD102 monolithic die built on TSMC's N5 or 5 nanometer node, and could clock as high as 2.3 to 2.5 gigahertz, with 18,432 CUDA cores via 140 44 SM units. That could mean as much as 92 teraflops of FP32 compute performance, double that of the RTX 3090, but hopefully that doesn't mean Nvidia will double the price as well. They can leave that to the scalpers. Nintendo revealed in its earnings call late last week that they do have another console in the works and gave the potential launch date as 20XX. Some took that to mean that they're giving themselves a 79 year window to accomplish the task, but I know a Mega Man reference when I see one and this was obviously a throwback to the Mega Man 2 intro sequence. They had to add another X, otherwise it would be too obvious. Incidentally, I think the Crash Man theme is one of the best chip tunes ever written. Here's a follow-up to the Los Angeles and Long Beach port backup situation that I've covered a few times now. It seems to be improving, thanks to the threat of financial penalties for the shipping companies involved. While there are still about 78 container ships waiting in San Pedro Bay, idle containers on the docks will now be fined if they overstay their welcome, with penalties increasing every day once imposed. This has lit a fire under the collective butts of the shipping companies who are responsible for them, and magically, there are 10,000 fewer containers on the docks, even a week before the penalties go into effect. Effect. Steam Decks sold out quickly when they went up for pre-order back in July, but it appears Valve was overly optimistic in their estimates, or the global supply shortage just caught up with them, as all orders have been delayed by two months. So the lucky few who got December pre-order dates will now be pushed to February 2022, January orders will be pushed to March, and so on. Valve said they were sorry, and I'm sure we'll all forgive them. Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson is selling his visual effects studio, Weta Digital, to video game software developer Unity for $1.6 billion. Details of the sale were revealed Tuesday, with Unity acquiring Weta's tools, pipeline, technology, and engineering talent, meaning people, 
275 engineers specifically, who are known for architecting, building, and maintaining Weta digital tools. It's a nice set of tools and has helped the studio collect six Academy Awards, so Unity's plans to put these world-class exclusive VFX tools into the hands of millions of creators and artists around the world sounds like a good idea. Maybe they can lend them the Rockstar and help the GTA trilogy look a bit more definitive. So there you have it guys, you're caught up on tech news for the week. Before you move on with your harvest festival planning though, a reminder that your feedback is always welcome. So please feel free to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description. If you're interested in further reading, you can also click the like button. If you enjoyed this video, check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. Thanks again everyone and we'll see you next week.